update on return to schools. So strongly that children need to be in school, that they are essential to the mental and physical health of a child and to their academic success. We have been cautious throughout this pandemic and we've pivoted when required to ensure we protect our schools, our communities and our collective progress as we work together to get kids back to school and our lives back on track. As you know, elementary and secondary students across Ontario will return to in-person learning on January 17th with strong protections in place, fully supported by Ontario's Chief Medical Officer of Health. The Ontario Children's Health Coalition, representing sick kids and CHEO and all pediatric hospitals, have endorsed the return to class. For students, this means that they can return to a classroom where they can learn alongside their peers, led by their teachers. Now, Ontario's plan to open and protect schools is focused on deploying millions of rapid tests to our schools and our childcare centres, enhancing ventilation and high quality PP, along with increasing access to vaccines for both children on a voluntary basis and staff. And as an additional measure, amid the highly transmissible Omicron variant beginning the week of January 17th, I am announcing that rapid antigen tests will be provided for schools in childcare and public schools, children in childcare settings, and students in public elementary schools. Staff and students will receive two tests each as an initial supply with over 3.9 million rapid tests shipped to schools as we speak, ready for January 17th. These tests are for use when symptomatic, as outlined in the updated school and childcare screener that has been strengthened. We will continue to expand access to rapid antigen tests for parents, for students and staff. And these tests will be made available for students in public secondary schools on a need basis. And more tests will be available in the coming weeks so that we can help limit the spread of COVID in our learning environments. This will build on the more than 11 million rapid antigen tests Ontario sent home with all children in publicly funded schools and private schools uh, ahead of the Christmas break, the only province to do so on a proactive basis to reduce risk. We also know that vaccination remains our best defence in the fight against COVID-19. It is essential for everyone who is eligible to get vaccinated. Millions of vaccines have been administered and we know they are safe we know they are effective. Now, it is encouraging that 82% of youth aged 12 to 17 are fully immunized. Uh, that is brilliant as we continue to work to increase that rate. It is positive that nearly 50% of children 5 to 11 have received their first dose. However, there is more we can do and more we will do, which is why our government is launching school-based clinics to support greater uptake of vaccination of eligible children and youth that requires the consent of parents in this province. This is just another option that will allow parents and children to safely and conveniently vaccinate themselves with the full consent and approval of parents. Also, we'll continue to provide planned access and accelerated access at our education childcare staff. As you know, just days ago, we announced accelerated access for these staff, encouraging them to get a booster in a community across Ontario. It'll help support stability with amongst our staff and keep students learning. We ask all education childcare staff to book early, book an appointment today for a booster in your community. Our government just in the past week stood up 10 additional uh, teacher, education worker and childcare worker focused clinics that have preferential lines or standalone clinics just for them in the GTHA with pharmacies and public health units right across Ontario working around the clock to do the same. These are two new important measures that will build on our comprehensive plan to support the return to in-person learning. That is supported by high quality PP by providing access to more than 9 million non-fitted N95 masks to all education and childcare staff. We are the only province to do so in Canada out of abundance of caution with more than 4 million three-ply high quality masks for students that are actually uh, on the way to schools as well. Millions already are there with 4 million more on the way just to be sure every student gets access to these masks should they need it.
We're also further improving ventilation by deploying an additional 3,000 HEPA units to learning environments. This builds on significant investments announced by our government over the past year and a half. Every step of the way, we have increased ventilation. And as a result of those early investments, well before Omicron hit our country and our province, we were leading in ventilation. 70,000 HEPA units in schools since September. $600 million, over 2,000 major ventilation, mechanical ventilation improvements in our schools that were underway. And together, this has really helped to ensure we have high quality ventilation in all schools because every single school has been inspected. We use the highest quality filters, MRF 13s, and we continue to take action to improve the air quality within schools. And so much so that we believe in the transparency of that information, which is why since September, every single school in Ontario, all 4,800 without exception, have reported on their upgrades, on their improvements, on the number of HEP units in their school. That is on every school board's website and on school websites should they have a website themselves. But we're going further. We're deploying 3,000 more within our schools. We've also uh, created a more stricter screening protocol for students and staff before they enter schools to help prevent any cases from getting there in the first place. We've delivered historic funding to school boards with $1.6 million of resources to protect against COVID. It could be for mental health, for technology, for staffing, and for better ventilation. And we have supported the stability of staffing with over 2,000 projected staff that have been hired, including educators, it could be custodians, it could be mental health workers. All of these individuals are making a difference in our schools. And this is in addition to the agreement we just reached that will allow us to nearly double the number of retired educators who can work within our schools. That's going to be critical. I want to thank them for stepping up. 11,000 last year alone did so. And we also have expanded access to teacher candidates. Thousands of teacher candidates will continue to work within our schools and help keep uh, them open. We have also have time-limited cohorting protocols to limit direct and indirect contacts of children by pausing some of those high-contact sports, stricter lunch cohort protocols, and elevated cleaning requirements in all of our schools. And I want to assure parents, students, teachers and staff that we are committed to providing students with a return to in-person learning with access to the supports they need to ensure stability and continuity of learning. As we adapt to this pandemic, we are building on our past investments and our efforts to protect against COVID-19 by bolstering uh, rising rates of youth vaccine, significant ventilation improvements in all publicly funded schools, and high quality PPE for students and staff. And in partnership with the Chief Medical Officer of Health, we will continue to monitor current public health trends and do whatever it takes to keep your child in class and as safe as possible. These and many other health and safety measures are part of our plan for return to in-person learning, a plan that involves many partners. And I want to thank our school boards, our teachers and our staff for the significant effort and contribution towards keeping schools open and keeping the kids as safe as possible uh, up until December of 2021. And I thank them for their work on the going forward. I also want to thank families and I want to thank students for getting vaccinated and for their cooperation and leadership at home. Um, I know this has been tough, but we will get through this. And we are committed to providing our students with a learning experience that minimizes uh, potential disruption, that protects them and their friends and their families and their educators. Thank you so much. I'll now turn it over to the Chief Medical Officer of Health.